What's going on guys? Pete Oak here. Chris over there. I uh, there it is, that's better, <laughs> sorry. And welcome to the brand spanking new Riders Block layout. We are in episode eight and we're ready to go. Okay? So my name is Pete Oak or Pete and now you can see is right below me. I can actually point to it, look. Uh, and uh, to my left is the very wonderful uh, Air Raid Lord, Chris. Hello, everybody. Yes. And for one straight hour, we're going to be talking about stories. Yeah. Stories. As always. Yes. Except this time, you're actually going to watch us talk about stories. You can't just listen to it, so you got to watch us now. So, basically, all right, I guess we're going to have to address the elephant in the room and talk about this layout. Okay, so basically, as you can see, we're no longer like flipping images. We're actually like moving about. Woo! Look, doing the jazz, jazz hands and whatnot. Okay. So, I can't see. I can't see his webcam yeah, by the so, way. Just FYI, because so, he has some XSplit format. Yeah, thing. with XSplit, the problem is uh, they have to see my like my webcam can only be registered in one application, and it's either Skype or this. And obviously, it has to be this because if it's on Skype, then you'll only be able to see Chris, and that's it. So I mean, you gotta have me in this. So obviously, I'm in here. <laughs> so he can only see the dog, but you guys can see that Ooh. see me in the finished product. So. Anyway, so basically I've been working on the VEX split, and I can actually do more on this. For example, hold on, I might as well test it out now. Let me just go over to, these are some of the stuff that we'll be seeing later on. Shazam! There you go. So we've got, <laughs> you've got, you've got Chris up here, you've got me down here, and uh, here we've got a load of web pages and stuff. So we're going to be using some of these uh, for this video, but for now, I guess we're just going to start talking about writing. So anyway, in the previous few episodes we've been talking about characters and story. And now we're going to talk a bit about, I mean, those are like the bare bones, like we were saying before. Larry. Those are like the bare bones of storytelling. You need a story and you need characters. But now we're going to talk about the kind of, like, the details now. So we're going to talk about, in this sub-series, we're going to be talking about, like, the, like, the little details that kind of make, that kind of, like, add the finishing touches to any story. This episode is going to be about dialogue. We've got scenery going on, scenery and cin cinematography. Uh, what else do we have? Um, I'm trying to remember. Do we have any other stuff planned? Do you have that list? Um, basically, how a dialogue can reveal a character's motives and other things about them, and also what how to achieve good dialogue. No, I was talking about you know what ones do we have in the future. Like, oh well, I was just giving scenery. Yeah, but like the ba yeah. like the basis of dialogue, you know, we're going to be talking about that. And I actually have web pages on this computer that we're actually going to be looking into. I don't think Chris has seen them yet, so it's going to be quite interesting because I can see them and he can. So. Sweet. It'll be kind of oh fun yeah, he's I'll, I'll just me. be saying yeah. I'm just also, I'll probably here. be. I don't know. I look here. I can obviously. I'm looking right at you if I'm looking here. But if I look here, I'm just which is where my thing is positioned. It doesn't look like I'm looking there. But um, it's what it's it's whatever. It's usually it's it's the audio that's the important thing. So I'm not gonna put too much emphasis on that. But um, yeah, you can still yeah. obviously watch this in an audio form if you really want to. Like you don't have to have our dialogue stuff here. Yeah, our our faces um, might be too much for you to handle. I know exactly. <laughs> like this is a brand new step forward. So I hope you guys enjoy this change. Yeah, yeah let us know. Put some feedback in the comments if you like this format. Are we that you ugly that you want to get back to the dog and book, or do you think this is a quiz? Yeah, which I one is better, honestly? Yeah, because I've never like asked. This, yeah, something like this we could actually utilize for something like this because we can actually start linking to like web pages and. Linking to all kinds of stuff, you can actually directly see what we're looking at. It's not as if you can just see like a still image. You can actually see us talking. If we wanted to show off something, for example, BRB, I <laughs> stole them, Chris. I'll be back in a wee second. I got, I got to show them something here. All right, so stole them, about whatever. All right, so Pete wants me to stall the honest as well. What I was saying before, Pete was asking about like various types of dialogues. What I'm probably going to talk about is how dialogue can be used to reveal things about a character. Um, usually, I am holding the orb. As you can see on this webcam, let me pull my headset real quick. Hold on. So I'm probably just getting a bit too jolly, but I mean, come on. Ah, uh, you know what? The writer's block is the perfect time this to do this. To <laughs> so I, I mean, don't so appropriate. Okay, now I'm gonna throw it on the t on the throw on the bed. Oh okay. no, no. Yeah, no, I, I threw it. I went. I threw it on the bed. Okay, the we're done. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so uh, sorry, I'm getting I'm getting too carried away. All right. So right. All right. I guess we might as well get into the episode now, because that's all the dilly-dallying stuff over and done with. Okay, so... Dialogue. Uh, I was talking about, yeah, when you told me to stall, I was saying how dialogue, and I was saying this before you told me to stop, that dialogue reveals a lot about a character, how you'd want the character to develop from a plot point. Also, it, I mean, especially for, you know, the, think of the different types of characters we talked to you about. Protagonist, antagonist... The dialogue for those characters is going to be different. Also, 
what part of the book are you at when you write the dialogue? The beginning, the middle, or the end? The dialogue for a character is obviously going to vary depending on how that character has changed, what the character is at the beginning. You know, obviously the dialogue shifts. And there's a flow to it, which we're going to explain as Pete kind of goes through the different types. Um, this is kind of what we did with the characters, you know, the different types of characters two episodes ago. And uh, it worked out pretty well, so we're going to do the same thing uh, now. So, obviously dialogue does vary a lot on, like, character traits and stuff. Like, you're not going to have someone that's described as, like, always happy to say, Yo, F you, mother... You know, like, they're not going to be like that, because I've just defy <laughs> the character traits. If someone has a character trait, you have to, like, their dialogue has to be has to be appropriate for that. So, you always have to, like, make sure that whatever character you're talking about... And you always have to factor relationships, if anything... We've been talking about how to like plan stuff and how to like get theorems and whatnot, you know, all that crap. But if you really want to like get some basis down, then then I would even say like like have two characters of your story and then just explain their relationship. Like I did this for my uh, for for one of my series actually, and I'm at, you know I might actually find it right now while I'm at it because I mean at this point why not? Because I can I can screen cap this kind of stuff. So I actually do have separate like slides as to their as to my characters' relationships with other characters. And I think it really benefits if you have at least like a paragraph or bullet points or whatever you prefer on the character's relationships with others because whenever you have that and it really helps out the dialogue, it doesn't just seem to be completely clueless. You're not like, oh, what would this person say in this situation? You would actually know, oh, because this guy likes this guy, however, he realizes that this guy's done something wrong with him, something bad, yeah. however, he's, he's in shaky ground with him. Then you can I'll comment. Him. I'll comment what Pete's saying is true. However, for me, you know, I have my own style. What I do is I basically I know the plot of my story so well that I usually don't have to, you know, list out interactions. Like for the orb, like Pete brought up, basically I don't have to say, oh, Noah reacts to Amber this way. Noah reacts to Augustine this way. Noah reacts to Alex this way. I don't have to list it. If I know the plot. The dialogue and the interactions kind of speak for themselves because it's basically the plot of the uh, of the story, and um, that's that's my preference. But I think if you're starting out for the first time, doing this kind of stuff is a foreign concept to you, or maybe it's a novel concept. Maybe doing what Pete suggested, writing it out in that form, would be the preferred idea. Well, I would say that obviously don't don't write like flipping typical stuff down, like oh this guy does not like the antagonist. Like no kidding. But I mean, if you can find some other layers to it, like maybe the antagonist means something to the protagonist. Like maybe, like, I don't know, you can go with a really cliche route that, like, the antagonist is the protagonist's father. Ooh. But now you can have, like, some, some witty dialogue and stuff regarding that. So you could maybe say, like, oh, you know there's tension in the air, but I mean, like, basically what we're talking about is, like, the foreground or the background as to what, what you should be structuring for your dialogue. We haven't got to the actual dialogue part itself, you know. And there's a load of like stuff that you have to avoid whenever you're doing like dialogue, because I, I see a lot of common problems. Like, for example, t just today I was performing a script. I didn't I didn't write it, but I was performing a script for for church, and uh, it was pretty. Like some of the dialogue was pretty bad, and I have some comments to make about it. So, but yeah, but just make general notes about each character's relationship. Maybe like n not directly how they act, but more so how they how how they feel towards different characters. So some some characters might be like, oh, you know. Like, 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 bring stuff like family into it, bring stuff like previous events into it, and so just try and make the dialogue as interesting as possible. Because and this is, this is where all of the character development that you did in the previous episodes, keep in mind when we had the episodes about character, all of the character development you did for that character, it basically transfers to the dialogue. When you write out the description of, you know, what kind of character this is, who they are, what they stand for, what they do in the book, you know, what their purpose is in the end, how they change. Once you establish all of that, as I said earlier, the dialogue kind of follows because their attitude, if you list out the attitude and the attributes of one character and list them out with another, they kind of conflict and that's where the dialogue comes in. They might, or they might conflict, they might go together. However they, go, however they form is where your dialogue comes in. And I guess in this series, you'll probably, in this episode, we'll probably be talking about both actual dialogue and also just like more so on my end just like silence how silence can be used as like a key part of your dialogue too because silence is like it's, it's a tool that you don't really want to mess with that much because it can be very powerful at the right hands like because i've seen plenty of scenes being ruined by people actually like you know by people talking for example one of the most famous ones that you guys might know of is 
the Star Wars, um, I believe it was uh, the final Star Wars film. It, it was the final one in terms of like the, the first trilogy. And I episode remember, three? Yeah, and so or episode six, I guess, in the official series. Oh, six. But I mean, there was a change. I remember I watched it recently. It's kind of ironic if we bring it up now, but I mean... Uh, in the original cut, there was a scene whenever Darth Vader was like, I think he was like, spoiler alert again, but I, I mean, a lot of people have seen Star Wars, so I mean, it's, out, it's been out for like 40 years, so I don't think spoilers really apply, but, <laughs> but anyway, but basically Darth Vader like, almost sacrifices himself to save his son, not not exactly in that kind of way, but he does do something to that nature, and it's completely silent, so like he stops, what's it, I can't even remember his name, but, but um, he stops him. Emperor from, Palpatine. I, I think it's him, but. He stops him from, like, killing Skywalker. Emperor, I think his name's Emperor O.J. some Pulpentine, but, uh... <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Sorry, I but basically, to there. what happens is, in the original scene, it's just silent. Like, he's, like, Darth Vader just, like, comes towards him and, like, you know, he texts him, like, he jumps down with him. Like, he grabs him and then they both, you know, fall off to their deaths. And because he doesn't say anything, it makes that scene more powerful. Like, it's Star Wars, so there won't be any, like, kick-ass, like, final line, like, from Terminator... It's not going to be like any like wimpy like big flipping dialogue y thing cuz I mean it's Star Wars. So however in the George Lucas remaster remastering of it what they did was they actually made Darth Vader go no or some dumb like I scream whenever he like grabbed it, whenever he grabbed the emperor and then threw him off. And um, to people that really annoyed them because it kind of ruins the scene because I mean the silence kind of like it, it, like Whenever you use silence, it kind of I didn't implements. actually know that. They did that for the re-release? Yeah, really? so they actually made what? Darth Vader like, scream like, oh. no! So, but I mean, like, that's kind of a case where you'd use silence to, to emphasize the actions of your of your people. Of your people? What the flip? To, like, of your, your characters. People. Of the yeah, people. character. They could be called people, too, but characters, really to. yes. But yeah, but in our, in our case, we call them characters. But you would mostly use that to, em to, to emphasize their actions and to say, oh, their actions... The, the, you know, this is supposed to be like a big breathtaking thing, and we're not going to ruin it with some like dialogue. Because dialogue normally, dialogue is mostly used to inform rather than to like inform and educate rather to like make an impact. Unless it's like an actual like, see, unless you can like utilize dialogue as like that kind of weapon. But for the most part, you'd mostly use silence as like that kind of thing where it's like, I want I want these characters' actions to to just speak for themselves pretty much, and so that's what they do. So in a Would scene you like say that. Hmm? Would you? Oh, oh, sorry. Would you say that it's also a tool that advances the story? Because obviously, you can't have an entire story with description, description, description. Obviously, the dialogue is what transitions the story. Like if two characters get to a fork in the road, instead of them saying, "Oh, they took the fork in the road," and when they went left because of this reason, wouldn't it make more sense for them to talk it out and say, "I want to go this way because," and this way because? Like the dialogue progresses the story. And it gives you, it kind of gives you that pause point, actually. I find when I write dialogue, there are some scenes where it really works because there's an action scene that might need to get interrupted or there's um, a description scene of the environment that needs to get interrupted by talking. And the talking give, fills you in, actually, on the setting sometimes. So the dialogue can be informational and can also help you make that that next leap. Well, I'm mostly speaking in like in like a film context where silence is much more like, like I think it's much more impactful whenever you can actually see it. If you're reading something and there's nothing really, it just depends on the author's description details and how they describe, um, how how the silence is created. Like almost like you have the cliche like oh there was so sound in the room. Yeah. Did it's you ever see the Da Vinci Code, the second Da Vinci Code movie? With Angels and Demons. Yeah, with yeah yeah with the guy who plays Obi Wan. Can I forget Ol his Ol name? Oh, yeah. Ewan, whatever the heck his name is. Yeah, there's the on. there's the scene there's the twist now as a spoiler alert again there's the twist at the end where he walks into the church and he he's gonna be named the Pope because he set off that anti-material bomb in in uh, in the sky and he saved the the Vat you know the Vatican from being destroyed but he was really in on it the whole time he was really with the Illuminati he was the bad guy all along so he walks in and he thinks he's gonna be crowned Pope but then they show you the scene where they figure out that he's really the bad guy and then there's silence. All the all the people from the from the Vatican are just staring at him, like all the archbishops and all the people are just staring at him. And then he looks around and without any dialogue, he's like, "Oh, I know I'm fucked." And then he just runs away and then he sets himself on fire and kills himself. So well, there you go, hey man. <laughs> yeah. That. See, the, see, if there were if, if it wasn't an action film, that would be like the the badass line, like "Amen, mother effort," and then just run away. Something yeah. Like that. yeah. But yeah. I guess we might as well talk about one line as well while we're here. But no, but basically for a silence like that, then the next line that comes after it always has to be like, unless you're completely changing scenes or whatever, 
the next line has to be like has has to like make an impact because the next line because uh, like I said, silence is quite an eerie thing and so the next line has to like mean so it has to be like gently said or whatever or it can be like something like, you can't just continue dialogue after a silence and I'm supposed to mean something and so basically the, 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 that's basically the premise of silence but like I said it's more common it's more commonly used in films than it is in like books and stuff and so. And so that that's why I probably talked about it in more detail than Chris because Chris is obviously I, I I use silence a lot more in my stuff. There's a common statement that people will use in a book, and this is very it's it's some people call it cliche, but it's it's effective and it's you know it's obviously used by lots of writers. I don't know, Pete, you probably know you've read it in a lot of books, I'm sure. There's the ever so popular. There was a moment of silence, like if two characters are talking and. The character says, "Oh well, thanks for saying that because my father's dead or something." And then there's just like, a, then in the in the actual text it says there 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 was a moment of silence, and then this character walked away or this character walked away. So in a movie, it's a bit more effective because you have the visual aspect where you can actually sense the dialogue shift and the silence. There's music that can bring that about. In a book. It's your imagination. You use the silence cue given by the author to interpret it in your own mind and see how it progresses later on in that sequence. Well, it's funny because silence in, in an actual novel technically doesn't exist. If you want silence in a novel, you go to like a blank page at the back of the book. Because <laughs> technically, the author or the, or the unnamed narrator in most cases, even if they're not so prominently shown in the story, they're always talking. So there is no, I don't think there's such a thing as a moment of as an actual silence in a book, because you always have someone describing what's going on, so you never, so unless it's like the end of the book, like the ending of the book is probably like the only time it actually is a silence, but then most of the time the silence is, is, you know, like it's not really utilized because it's all a nice happy jolly ending, like oh, you know, everything's all ni nice and jolly, but I mean, for the most part, I don't think there is silence in, in a book, to be honest, because you always have that person describing everything. So you know, like even if you hear something like silence fell inside the room, blah blah, blah then um, then that then obviously that's not silent because you, you just because you're hearing it in your mind, obviously. So so that, that's just what I think about that. Obviously, I don't really like have that much experience in that, but that's just like what I think about silence in books because it, it kind of works, but at the same time, it kind of. It, it, from, yeah, I think I have to use it differently than what you yeah. use it in movies. From my perspective, having written, you know, that full-length book that Pete showed probably on his webcam, Pete, if you want to show people again in some crazy fashion, because I, I, can be I can't see it. it. Yeah. Well, go freaking get it then while I'm yeah. talking. Um, Drinking water, come down. <laughs> um, basically, from my perspective, having written, there's interesting ways that you can tell people that there's a moment of silence, <clears throat> other than nope. coughing. Other than coughing, um, of course. <laughs> but um, basically, instead of just saying there was a moment of silence, you can do a number of things. Like if two characters are talking, or maybe if they're arguing, you could basically do um, how about you know they walked away. You know they maybe they circled each other, or they do an activity. Maybe there's like a sudden stop. Like as they're talking, there's just a break in the dialogue and two characters do something or uh, multiple characters do something that's not what they were doing before that's technically a moment of silence because they're not talking there's actions going on but it, it depends on what you define as silence is silence the absence of written dialogue in a literary form is dialogue you know in movie form you know the absence of sound but do you include music as sound do you include, you know, talking as sound? It's very, it's up to, to interpretation. That's why, you know, obviously we're interpreting it. But from a book sense, especially fiction, like what I wrote, there's, a, there's other ways to do it. Now, my story is first-person perspective, so the character interprets, you know, the character that you're seeing everything through interprets everything from his standpoint, and so they can pick out where the silence is. They can either say there was a moment of silence, but from their perspective, or they can say the actions of the people that are you know, moving around them, and then that can be the silence that you draw from that particular scene. So it really it comes in various forms, and there's interesting ways that you can do it. I'll try to think of an example of maybe I, something I've done or from a book to give you a better idea, but for now, I know that there have been techniques and stuff I've done. Maybe a character does an action. Maybe a character just attacks somebody for no reason. That could be considered silence maybe because of no dialogue, but there's, there's interesting ways to do it nonetheless. It does just depend on like what you cater as silence. Like for me, obviously, you come from the film standpoint. My silence is complete, 
silence, like no music, no sound, well, potentially music depending on the way you utilize it, but for the most part a good silence is just no music is necessary. But yeah, like for me it's like not nothing going on. Oh, here's effects. a good silence scene. Do you remember the scene from The Dark Knight where the Joker breaks out of prison? Do you remember that? And he's riding in the cop car and Gordon's like, oh, he wanted to get captured. And there's that scene where he's riding out the cop car. Remember he sticks his head out the window and he's like flapping his hair and yeah. the music drops. Like you hear the audio just drop and you hear like this really like loud rumbling noise as, as music to, t you know, to, to give you the gravity of what just happened kind of thing. I don't know if you'd consider that silence. To me well, it is because then it brings about an effect. Well, anyway, well, yeah, that's what they're trying to utilize it for. But I, anyway, I guess we should digress on sounds because we've talked enough about no dialogue, so I guess we might as well talk about the actual dialogue itself. And so, I would actually like to direct everyone. Oh, here we go. First transition. Bam! Here we go. So we are actually at a web cage. You know, any of you are here familiar with the dummies uh, section of books? We'll probably be aware that they actually have something called playwriting for dummies. This is actually a separate. Um, well, it's, 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 none of us do it. Like I probably, I've, I've, like most of the stuff that I've written have been plays. Of all, to be truthful with you, but I mean, I'm still more, I'm, I'm more like a cater towards like you know the, the, the direction type element of it, where it's like directing characters and actors or whatever if you want to be, and then scripts, and then playwriting scripts is kind of like the same thing. So, anyway, so here we go. We got some. Car making character dialogue sound natural, okay? And Chris doesn't see this, by the way. This is just me, and you guys will see this at the moment. So ba pretty much what Chris is just hearing is just me repeating what it says on the page, okay? So I guess I'll just... Uh, this is playwriting here, but I'll go off anyway. Dialogue is the primary and most important component in playwriting. The principal purpose of dialogue is to advance the action of the play. Though dialogue sounds like natural conversation, which for the most part it should be, you know, unless you have people speaking in like some sort of ridiculous alien language where you defy the laws of common conversation, most of the stuff that you will be saying is just natural speaking dialogue, okay? Every word of dialogue you write for a character, whether it reveals his aspirations, frustrations, motivations, or intentions, should be crafted to help him achieve his objectives, okay? Or his objective. Alright, so here are some of the do's and don'ts of dialogue, okay? Is this copyright protected? <laughs> I don't know, but who cares? Okay. All right. No, well, it's called the ch well. They they put it online, so oh well. All right. Okay. So anyone right. can access it. Okay. Yeah. Use the rule of three for important info. Okay. If the audience needs to know and remember some bit uh, some some bit of information in order to understand what's going on, repeat that information three times in different ways to cement in the minds of audiences. Now that's an interesting point. Okay, I might as well transfer to the other screen here. So yep. that's quite an interesting point because. If you do want to convey something, it's very easy to fall into the trap of just making it completely blunt. For example, say if you have this scenario where, like, you're trying to escape from a town that's been invaded by zombies or whatever, or like, the zombies have risen from the grave, and you're trying to get away from the town, and then the army, like, blows up the bridge that is the only way to civilization. Don't have a character just blatantly say, Oh no, they blew out the bridge, and that's the only way to get out of our civilization, to get back into civilization. Well, first of all, don't butcher whatever the heck you're going to say, but also don't say that for a stop. Because the audience doesn't like just being told blatantly what's going on. They don't like flipping people just saying, Oh, did you hear... Or or another common thing that I think it comes up later on this list, but is blatantly saying someone's name just to cement it in. So one common thing I normally see is just like, the very first few lines of dialogue being like, Hello, Timothy, my best friend, Timothy, who also lives next door, Timothy. Why, hello there, Jonathan, who's my also next my next door neighbor, Jonathan, who flipping, who who's, uh, who both of our parents work together for. It Jonathan. shouldn't, yeah, it shouldn't, uh, yeah, it shouldn't sound cliche, is what Pete's trying to say, basically. In, in the bridge example that you gave, just like I said about the silence thing, there are other ways that you can show people that that bridge is broken. Maybe, oh, let's get across through the river. You know, let's build a plank so we can get across, or something like that. Something that shows an action, but at the same time it has a dual purpose. Basically, have actions and dialogue that produce dual purpose methods, basically. So, if a character, it's, here's an interesting example. A character says, um, my, you know, we can't get across this bridge because, I don't know, because my dad... You know, because it was my dad who destroyed the bridge with the army. So now you know, okay, this, this guy, his dad's in the army. That's the reason why they can't ac get across. And um, that's one of your cement, um, you know, kind of telling the audience that the bridge is destroyed. So do you see how in that one sentence you kind of summed up a lot of things? Now, don't do that consistently, but every once in a while it's good to have that. It, there's a good layering 
to have that in your book because as you progressively good, go on, all the facts are going to start to come together and the audience will be given a clearer picture of what you're actually trying to say. And I think that's what Pete was trying to explain with his... Um, I guess in a way, that. you could say it bluntly, but don't, but don't make it sound blunt. Like, for example, one thing you could do is if you're going to do that, then maybe it could be, like, some guy's on the phone. You know, well, he's on the phone. He might be on, like, a walkie-talkie or whatever crap you use. And then he's saying, oh, no, like, like, oh, the bridge has been destroyed. And then maybe the other person on the other end could say, wait, they destroyed the bridge? And the question mark. No, they've, you've, you've just said it twice in those two sentences. But one of them was a question. I mean, whenever you question something, then it almost kind of disguises what you're trying to say. So it's yep. like, wait, they destroyed the bit. It's almost as if, like, oh, you can understand why he said that because maybe this guy wasn't too sure, you know. Yeah. Or maybe if there was, like, a cut on the line, you know, maybe an even better excuse to bring it up. So, so tricks, more tricks, just basically. Use more tricks, to be honest. So we don't have to just, you know, stick with the book and just be like, yes, we're just going to stick with this. And so, so at least, like, so yeah, like, that's an interesting rule because if you do want to get something really implemented, and there's probably more so for, like, for acting and stuff, whereas for something like a book, you can just read it back. For something like a film, you, you can't just, you know, bring up your remote control in, the, in like a film theater and just like re just rewind the tapes. So if, you, <laughs> if, if you're watching a movie in, a, in like a cinema or whatever, you can't just like rewind the tapes and you can't just flip in, like, you can't just flip in, like, like go back or tell, like if you want to say something, you have to like say something proper, okay? So basically, yeah. I'm going to get this next one because I need to blow my nose. Just let you know. My yeah, we've both been feeling quite bad recently, so sad face. Yeah, yeah. it's not looking quite good. Anyway, um, <clears throat> next point, okay? Characters shouldn't, you know, talk perfectly. And I really oh, whoa, sorry, hold on, let me. Oops, sorry, <laughs> I didn't bring that one up. I don't think. Here you go, okay, there it is. Characters shouldn't, you know, talk perfectly. And I really like this one because so many times in books and stuff, I see people talking like like na like. I think this is more of a problem in like in books. Because for something like acting, natural, you know, uh, messing up of lines and stuff, not necessarily messing up in a big way, but just like little things. Like you hear me say like a lot and you know a lot, but that's just how I am and that's just how I speak. Yeah, exactly. That's just how people speak. It's natural. The um, people use um when they want to pause. There are just things, some things in society that people just implement and it's... You know, it's interesting if you put it with the characters, but you have to stay consistent if you were to do that, or you couldn't if... It depends on where you want the characters shift to be with, you know, their statements and stuff, if they grow out of it or not. Yeah, okay, so I, I just accidentally gave you all a big flip and <laughs> a big mouth, but I just wanted to make sure we were, we were actually looking at this. Yeah. Let's okay, continue. In life, people don't speak perfect English when they converse. Listen to how people speak and try to recreate realistic sounding speech patterns, flaws and all. Now, don't get this confused with, like, with with not making it sound interesting. And I remember I was looking at another website, I don't have it on here now, but I have it on my school computer. There's a really good website that also talks about dialogue where they say, don't, like, like don't make it sound, don't make it so, like, natural that it's just boring. Because if you were to actually listen in on someone's conversation, no, no, most of the time it's quite boring, to be honest. It's like, hey, how's it going? Oh, it's going quite good. How about you? Yeah, yeah, it's going quite alright. Oh, it's work. Oh, yeah, work's doing quite good. Like, if you're going to make something sound interesting, if it's going to be like that, maybe for, like, the opening parts, maybe that's an excuse. But I mean, if you're like in a heat of battle, obviously you want to make some stuff sound a bit more simplistic and real. And just remember, you're like the creator of all this. You can change all this stuff, you know, like willy nilly. So you can do whatever you want with this. With these yeah, things. exactly. And I'm sure they still haven't converted to the big picture, but well, but still, like this is quite a key point. I just think so. Just stick to just just stick to the real the realistic parts. Everyone has flaws whenever they speak. Uh, everyone has flaws in their character and stuff. I think I mentioned that in my protagonist and antagonist one. Everyone has flaws in their character, and everyone has flaws in their dialogue. So never forget, never forget that too. Unless you've got like a smooth speaking character, where that's like one of their personality traits. Like they they never like miss a beat in whenever they speak. Like they're the best, you know, etc. etc. So once again, apologies for not bringing up the big screen again, but I'll bring it up for this next one. Okay. What do you mean by big screen? Because I obviously uh, can't see it. Yeah, no, I've got I've got the the web screen here at the moment. Whenever I and I'm whenever oh. we talk about I bring it to the big screen. But oh well, okay, never mind. Okay, point three. Avoid using cliches in dialogue. Not to beat a dead uh. horse, but cliches make dialogue sound done and always uninspiring. Basically, I think what that means is like, don't use like one-liners and stuff whenever they're not appropriate. Don't say like, don't say like the cliche like "I love you," you know, like that kind of like. Most of the stuff is quite dull, to be honest. Like like I was saying, like. Yeah. I think that's kind of a self-explanatory one. Like, like you don't don't. Here's a good one, and Pete will remember this because I, I remember I read my book to Pete. Um, a year ago, I think I might like and this there was one. there was 
What? <laughs> I, I think I'm gonna enjoy this, but go on. There was, I don't know if you remember this, Pete. Do you remember the line, uh, goodbye hearing, um, oh, no, wait, goodbye, like, it was something like, I, I, I obviously changed it, but it was something like, goodbye, old voice, hello, James Earl Jones. Oh, and my like, gosh, I and, and Pete, that. And, yeah, yeah, Pete stopped me and was like, who the fuck is James Earl well, Jones? And I'm like, that, but, yeah. and I said, James Earl Jones does the voice for Darth Vader, and I'm like, because basically Alex's suit modulates his voice, so it's and Al and Noah's hearing it for the first time, so he's supposed to have a weird reaction to it. And you're like, yeah, but that's not the way to do it. And thank you for P for you know telling me that. So I was like, oh wait, that really doesn't make sense. It's just so like I, if you're creating your own, if you're creating your own universe and stuff, don't bring like pop cultural references into yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And it's, especially since this book, you know, the kid grew up in the year 2080, so that guy's been dead probably for years. Yeah, in so that how the heck is anyone so, gonna remember it? Yeah, yeah. So I I I, I did fortunately take that out and stuff and that's another thing i think i just brought up jokes in dialogue how often to joke and how often not to and when to like, and when not to yeah course. when to and when not to because maybe you need a joke maybe to break the tension between two characters maybe if two characters are really friendly they can make a joke but the point of your book should not especially if it's a serious book the point of it shouldn't be to make a joke like like if noah and alex are hiding in like like a closet trying to like escape some guy it's not like Alex is gonna be like, "Hey Noah, why did the chicken cross the road?" It's like, "Oh, it's like, come on, like we don't, <laughs> we don't want any like like silly jokes like that." Like, I would that's say not jokes would only be acceptable if you're trying, to, if you're not taking yourself seriously. So like, so basically, even if it's not necessarily a comedy film, like Die Hard is one of those films where it doesn't really uh, take itself that seriously, and that's why it has like one-liners and jokes stuff. Terminator is another one. It just has jokes and stuff, you know, just thrown in there, just because most of the time, you know. It knows what it is, and it's not trying to be something else. It's not trying to, like, flip in, oh, maybe it has a deeper meaning. Like, it knows it's an action movie, and it's going to play by the cliches of an action movie. So, yep. that's just how it goes. So, yep. I guess, um, <laughs> cliches are easy enough, okay? Number four is actually one that we, I was just bringing up. Don't overuse character names and dialogue. People don't address each other by name in every sentence they speak because it sounds silly. Mary, you look great. Thank you, Tom. Do you want to watch a movie, Mary? Why, yes, Tom. Using car use character names in dialogue early and then sparingly. Completely agree with this one. Get the name Cementa, especially if it's a mo is a vis especially if it's a film. Whenever you know they don't have flipping name tags on them saying "Hello, my name is you know my name is like Darn or whatever the flipping heck your name is." For a book, it's quite easy to do that because you're constantly using the names again. Yeah, and another good thing about books is you can actually say who said the statement. Like Noah, get over here. You know, Alex said, and then and then the next line can be like, "I'm right over here." Now, here's an interesting thing for writers of novels, which I'm going to give you this tip. When you write, there's actually a way you can do dialogue. Like here, uh, Just like Pete said, not saying you know the name every single time in the dialogue. Here's another thing you also don't want to do. If two characters are talking back and forth between each other, don't c continuously say who's speaking every single statement. Like It's okay to do it the first two times. But then after that, leave it for a little bit, then reinforce who's talking maybe in an important dialogue moment. So, for example, like, Alex, how are you doing, said Noah. I'm doing quite well, said um, Noah replied. How are you doing, Alex? I'm doing quite well, Alex said. Like, you see, like, you, like, you keep establishing who said what. It's good to do that so your reader doesn't get confused, but doing it consistently makes the, like, it makes it sound really, 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 really bland. And... This is just a preference of mine. Some people might disagree with that. But every couple of lines, you don't have to say who said the statement. Like, Noah can say, how are you? And it doesn't have to say that he said it. It can just be in quotations because you pretty much established from the previous line that the other character said it. It's not like they're going to get lost. Only establish it if you think the reader's not going to understand. Like, oh, who said that dialogue? You know, only do it in that circumstance. And that's basically how I do my writing, and I feel that would make for successful dialogue. So you don't get lost, and it's also not... I guess an exception would be if it was more than two people. If it was yes. a group of people. Unless you're doing something like very easy when you know it's going to be someone else. So it could be like, say if we had, you know, Chris P and Matt, why not? Chris P and Matt. It'd be like, like say if Chris says, oh, I knew we should have taken the force route. Oh, you know, like, uh, you know, what are you kidding me? That force route was going to be bad, you know, Peter replied. No, it was going to be good, Chris said. What, like, like, was not, was too, was not, was too, you know, something like that, you can kind of understand. Okay, Matt obviously isn't gonna, just gonna butt in all of a sudden. Great. Technical difficulties here. Okay, sorry about that, everyone. We had another flipping cliche Skype crash. Woohoo. Yeah, don't anyway. worry, I'll edit it. Don't worry. 
It's all good. Okay, we'll Master. Be back, okay. Yep. But anyway, um, so what were we talking about? Oh yeah, so like the the, the, the three word thing was like was not was to was not was to like that kind of stuff. Obviously, Matt isn't just gonna butt in, but you kind of know it's kind of been cemented who's speaking what, you know? Okay. And yeah. actually, I guess while Chris was talking about like whenever Chris was saying all that stuff about like ah. Oh, Said, said, Alex, said, Noah, said, probably one of the biggest curse words you could use in novels. You don't say said all the time. And I know you probably all learned this whenever you were in school, <laughs> but I mean, people still do it quite a lot, where it's like, oh, I know what they did, said this guy. Oh, really, said the other guy. Like, there's more words than said. In fact, brrr, look at this. I actually have on the screen a thesaurus page of different words you can use for instead oh of said. God. Look at this. Explain. Look at I'm sure. I'm gonna guess. I can't see it, but I'm gonna guess some of the ones that are there. Explained. We have four pages. I flipping said. All right. Words. Let me go off the top of my head. Here's some I know. Explained. Commented. Yelled. Growled. Anything. You know. Obviously, not. And I'll say this before Pete goes. Um. Explains what he wants to say. Not every single statement needs to be anything other than said. Like not everything needs to be yelled, exclaimed. You know, screamed. You know, ex You know. It can you can use said to just you do regular statements, but you know use it to change things up. Just like we said with the dialogue, with the you know Alex said he said you know just just like I said you don't have to have that for every single line. Same thing goes with the verb for or the action for the character and what they're saying. Like it doesn't always have to be something and stuff. Just it's a nice equilibrium. As long as you can find an equilibrium with the tools you're given, you're always gonna probably succeed with your with your dialogue as just a general rule but um okay all right so what were you saying all right this next point is quite an interesting one because it's one that a lot of people might forget about okay the beginning of the line shouldn't echo the end of the prior line the dialogue of one character need not repeat what was said by the other and this is actually quite funny because i know some people in real life actually do this where they just repeat the line that you just say so you would say something like that was pretty cool, and then someone else says, that was pretty cool, unless you're using it as like a question. If you're like making fun of them, if someone says, that was really cool, you know, that was pretty cool, that was pretty cool, you think that was pretty cool, I'll show you pretty cool, and then whatever, you know, <laughs> just do something dumb like that. But, um, yeah. But yeah, but that's an interesting little point where it's kind of self explanatory in a way, but I mean, some people might just forget about it. I guess it's a little side one, to be honest. Okay? Do you yeah. have anything to comment on that, or should we just move on to the next one? We got three um, more. let's see. Um, no, I, I honestly, if I if I say something, it'll probably like I feel like I'm reiterating like with the balance and stuff. Like, um, probably just the same thing I said with the previous one. Finding a balance to that, you can use it, but don't use it all the time. Is basically the general rule. Okay. Um, next point: avoid dialogue that's really speechifying. All right, this is an interesting one. Avoid having characters speak lines and lines of dialogue without interruption. In life, people usually alternate sentences and conversation, even cutting in on each other. Try to capture the rhythm of real speech. And I guess the only exception with this would be soliloquies, if you're doing that. Soliloquies in in, uh, in plays, uh, monologues in movies, I guess would be a way to put it. Where it's basically one card is just venting off his thoughts. And in a case like that, unless you have like, unless you're doing one of those like dynamic, like, I don't know, like flipping gladiator ones. Heck, even over here, I actually, he I actually have quote number 100. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridus, commander of the armies of the north, general of the Felix Legions, loyal servant to the true empire. Mark, I haven't seen this film in so long, I'm pretty bad in the trying to say My name is Maximus Decimus Meridus. Yeah. Father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered And I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. <laughs> yeah, so, unless you're from some badass like that, then you wouldn't just say, like, oh, so tell me your story. Oh, well, brrr, you know, like, you're not going to have How that ironic anymore. is that? Because that's the theme song to the writer's block, that the Slaves to Rome song from the Gladiator film. Wait, <laughs> that's actually, that. that's the theme. You didn't know that? The Slaves no, to Rome know, song, I yeah. I know. That's the, sure yeah, that's from Gladiator. Yep, that's where I took it from. So, yeah, basically, like, it's basically the same point as, like, keeping your dialogue realistic. Like, keep it, like... Keep it going, like have people interrupt and stuff. I actually did this one time in one of my, uh, in one of my, what do you call it? In one of my like junior scripts I did, whenever uh, one of my guy, the guy that I was playing as, uh, was supposed was about to go into a huge soliloquy, and then the guy that I was with, who's like my like butt buddy in a way, like he's one of those like like sidekicks that just is kind of irritating. He's almost like Donkey from Shrek, and you know those kind of that kind of sidekick huh. type of type of type, type, type person. And basically, I'd start myself. I'd be like, well. I'd like to tell you that 
I, I am a, like, you know, I, I have a quite a depressing life. Nothing good has ever happened to me in my life. And the guy would be like, come on, like, nothing. Like, are you really telling me that nothing good is? And it's if, like, I'm trying to have one of these, like, big emotional moments. And this guy's just kind of, like, butting in. Like, he almost knows what the cliche of this is going to be. And he's just trying to avoid it. It's, it's one of those kind of things. So, it's kind of, like, realistic. Because, realistically, no one really goes on, like, huge motivational rants or anything. But, like, for the most part, it's just kind of, like, like you just kind of, like, ban off each other for the most part. So, I guess that's what that point's trying to emphasize. Mm-hmm. I just need to take a drink here, that's what's killing me. Whoop. Whoops. Yeah, I mean, I, I've never been involved with drama and kind of the, the acting kind of scene like that, especially script writing and stuff. That's why it's good the writer's block gives you different perspective. I from But likewise, novel, you wouldn't have, like, a huge block of text for, like, someone's dialogue. No, 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 no. But there are, like, little instances. Like, well, no, I mean, even if there are instances, I try to cut it short with other characters butting in. Like, I remember in the orb... At the final scene, Algatine's defending why he has to have the orb. He's like, "This object is for peace. I've suffered my whole life. You know, this is you know, I, I have to have this power. I have to save the universe. I have to do this and that." And he basically goes on this big rant tirade as to why he needs it. But I keep it short. Like I get to the main points. I don't have him go like his life story. Like I was born in a log cabin and. And then I was did this, this, and then like it's not like he starts from the beginning of his life and bores everyone for four hours. Like he gives, like he gets straight to the point. I need this object. This is what I need it for. And then out, and then a character cuts in and says, "No, you can't have that." And then he defends himself. So the only time there's big blocks of text is when there's you know some someone needs to say something, get something off their chest, or here's an interesting one: someone needs to explain something at the beginning of the book. Alex explains to Noah the conflict between the Tarfons and the Ariates. Now, you could easily have Alex go on like a four-page rant as to why the Tarfons and the Ariates hate each other. So basically, you could have them go on that giant... Sorry, people are talking right now. It's really disrespectful. But anyway, you could have people go on a giant tirade. You know, Alex basically talk and say that you know, oh, the Tarfons and the Ariates hate each other because they have this war and all this stuff. And it could go on for four pages, or you could have Noah interrupt, because Noah knows nothing about this. And this is actually what I do in the book. Noah interrupts and says, oh, why did this happen? And then he's processing it. There's actually a point where Alex pauses to take, like, a drink or something like that. And Noah, thinking to himself, like, a st like kind of reviews the thoughts. And it helps the reader because you're reviewing what you just heard. And it helps the character, you know, develop his point of view. Like I said, one sentence, one paragraph can establish a whole bunch of things. And a combination of that will lead to a successful work. And, um, you know, again, it, having giant dialogue trees is just it's something to generally avoid. Unless it's absolutely necessary to a character, I'd say avoid it for the most part. And it's kind of ironic because the next point, the second to last one, is keep your agenda out of the dialogue. Let the theme of your play be conveyed by events, not dialogue. If you have to tell the audience what the point of your play is, and the play probably isn't working well as it should. So that's basically reiterating the fact of, like, don't just explain everything. Don't be like, oh, well, this happens, and this happens, and this happens. Let the events, like, it's almost like, like an imagination type thing where don't just, you know, like, don't just, like, just say stuff. Like, let stuff actually happen. Then, yeah, like, even even when Alex explains the conflict between the Tarfons and the Ariates, he keeps it very, very general and very brief. And he brings up some big topics that he doesn't go into. And then it's throughout the rest of the book that you discover what those topics are and what actually happens in the book. Yeah, it leaves room to, for, like, for other stories like later on, or maybe for like other books. You know, if you keep stuff like quite simple in, in some areas. like You never know what you're going like, to yourself, like, find yourself into, some of this stuff. And so... In that case, it's, that's kind of an interesting point, I guess, again, because it's, it's interesting enough, depends on what events that you're really talking about. Like, I, I guess by agenda, they mean, like, messages and stuff. Like, don't just, like, let someone explain the message. Like, oh, and the message of all this is blah, blah, blah. Let the reader find out. A reader or watcher find out for themselves, because it, 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 it makes them feel smart, that's for sure. So, um, I, I, I really don't have much to say about that one. It's kind of surprising, just... <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of weird. Alright, and, uh, and the final one is actually quite funny, so I, I quite like this one, okay? Avoid yes. photonically spelling out accents and dialects. Just spell the word normally and make sure you cast an actor who can speak with a Spanish accent, for example. So, basically, don't be really racist. 
Uh, okay. Well, that would happen if you were doing as specific races of people. Like, all right, this guy's going to be Latino or African American or something. Are you saying like slang? Like, if a guy's like a gangster, like you know, he would have words like yo, and instead of totally. you know going, it would be like go in, like G O I N. Instead of adding the adding the G, it would be like an apostrophe and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I've, stuff I've actually, like I've that. actually done that for some of my research. For example, if I, I'm actually just find. I don't like oh boy. Here while I'm here. Get some exclusive oh boy. stuff here. Um, okay, here's an example, okay? I'm actually going to transfer you over to one page of episode four Froman. Three, sorry, episode oh, three. Oh, exclusive okay? showing. So here this we go. Cool. So yep. Here we go. We got shut the F up for a second. Sorry, I, I just censor my swear words because I don't like swearing. So, But I, I, I put swearing into my series just to make it realistic, pretty much. Yep. Shut the F up for a second. I have to listen to this. Well, there goes 25 minutes we could have spent on the challenge. I swear, P, if he's lying to us again, I'm going to kick his. Okay, so it was, it was just another case of like, interruption, so I'm trying to keep it realistic. Okay, we'll have to meet him in a separate lobby, then he'll show us the leak glitch. Okay, leak is spelled 1337, because that's basically the way that he would like say it, in a way. Like, I could just say leak, but then someone reading that, you know, if, if they're into like, the gaming slang, which Zach is into, like, in real life, he would actually understand what that means and stuff. So that's kind of an example of me abbreviating stuff. And there's a load of different abbreviations I have. Like he mispronounces words. Like he spells like he spells a uh, coincidence as coin incident. Like stuff like that. There's so kind of similar to what Chief does from my reading the Chief. Like he, yeah, exactly. all of his words are like completely butchered and stuff. But they're spelled like that because that's the way he would say them. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of in the way that it would go. But if you're trying to say, if you're like, I can understand where it's coming from. Where if you're trying to flip and say something like, oh. Like, like, if you're trying to say something dumb, like, flip, uh, if you're trying to be Spanish or something, you're not going to say, like, El Campadro, you know, like, trying to, like, trying to, like, speak Spanish and stuff, like, going to flip and Google Translate, or worst of all, if you're in a, <laughs> now, this is actually kind of correlate from what Chris and I, I think you know, you know what's coming, I'm pretty sure. Okay? What? What's coming? Please, in your script, don't write something that's Russian and then translate it below it. Just, just don't. Or if you're in a book, books are even worse, actually. In a book, don't write in Russian and then try and I, it all right, let me just, I'm face palming, not because I've done it, but because we know someone who has, and... It's, <laughs> you know, I'll face palm with you, actually. Yes. Please fucking don't, if you're going to do something in a different language, don't translate it next to the damn sentence. It's a work. And maybe if there's a section, and like it, some books have indexes, like science fiction books have an index of, all right, this alien race is these people. And there's a, some books have like a vocabulary section, like this person is this, and this is what they equal. You could have that for, you know, if you have lots of different words from different languages. Please don't do it in quotations next to the word. That is my one request. You could mess you could mess up in every single way possible in your in your book. I will not touch it if it has that in it. Okay, warning yeah. from yeah, both Pete that. and Chris. Big yeah. warning. Okay, just don't just don't do it. Because I mean, it just makes you look really uneducated, and it kind of makes it look as if you obviously put that through. You put the English translation through Google Translate into Russian. Like, if you're going to do something like that for a book, at least be creative about uh, it. Just say, like, you're know, speaking something in an unknown language, because if you're saying it from that kind of perspective and they don't speak Russian, how the heck are they going to know the perfect Russian uh, translation of what they just said? It just makes no sense. But yeah, that's, like, the biggest concern at all. But most people actually have an IQ above the flipping a, a, a goldfish, so obviously they'll <laughs> actually understand what that is, okay? Yeah. Um, so those are basically, like, some basic do's and don'ts for dialogue. You can obviously go much deeper into this. I don't know how long this, um... I don't exactly know how long this video's been going on for, unfortunately, because Expo doesn't have a timer, I don't think. I, I don't yeah. think it does, let me see. Uh, yeah, I was I was just dealing with someone over there, but I, I don't know, because you, you usually do the time. I'm not sure what the time is. I have no but... idea what the time is, but oh well, who cares, but we'll do it live, okay? So, I'm just trying to think as to how long we've actually been running this for, because I'm trying to think... Well, the like, new Skype call says 15, just going on 15 minutes, and then the old... I don't know how we were going on the old one. I would one, guess so. probably 30, 30, 40 minutes, perhaps, on that one. So it might be a quite short, quite short episode, but these are, like, these are like the perhaps. soft things. Like, these are kind of like the things where they're not necessarily like the big... Like, obviously, dialogue's a big thing, but it's not exactly like... You don't need dialogue to make a story. You can't... Like, there's very good silent stories out there where just characters and story, and that's it. Yeah, but there then, are some stories without dialogue that work perfectly. Yeah. But then we're gonna. But then in the next episode, we're gonna talk about the complete opposite. Whenever there's no dialogue, there has to be scenery. 
There has to be cinematography and scenery. The and we're setting, gonna yes. The setting is one of the most crucial aspects to a story. Without the setting, you're really going to... And it's funny, some publishers say this. Without the setting, like, they, they get lost in the book. It's kind of it, like they, they get lost, like, trying to figure it out and stuff. And so, yeah, we'll leave that for next week, though. So, what I might do, actually, is... This is something a bit, a bit like an exclusive thing, okay? I'm okay. going to flip... All right, we kind of did this just there now, but I'm going to do it in a different context. I'm actually going to look and... Hmm, I'm, wa I'm wondering if I should try this, okay? Do you try think it. if do you think if I shared screens with you, you could actually see this one too? Because what Maybe. I'm going to do is... I'm going to try this out, okay? Sorry, we're doing this live because we're kind of... Because, you know, we're just kind of... Uh, I forget how to share screens. No, I have to do it anyway. Okay, share screens, okay? Just accept the invite if you can, okay? All right, it's loading right now. No, this would be pretty sick if this works, like... Flipping oh, it huge. works. It works. I okay, see, so oh, sc screenception. I see myself, but it's like an opposite thing. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. But anyway, okay, so to you guys, here's what we're looking at, okay? The two of us are going to dissect some actual dialogue that I put in episode four film while it's up here, okay? Oh, my God. So we're going to have an exclusive flipping thing, all right? This is going to be quite sick, all right? So basically, let's just let's start from when Zach comes in. Okay, so basically the whole premise of this is um, Matt and Pete are trying to do a challenge set by Bungie, because Bungie, like, they're long gone, obviously. Unless, except for this one day, whenever they post a random blog post, and they're like, alright, if you do this certain challenge, then we're just gonna, you know, we're gonna give you, like, a special prize, but you don't know what it is yet, okay? So basically, Matt and Pete are in a fury, because since they're both, you know, hero, huge hero fanboys, they're actually, they're in a big push to try and beat this, okay? Try and beat this challenge. And then they know Zach's gonna come along, and Zach's always the one that wastes time, he's like the dilly-dallier, like, he never puts <laughs> on his truthful. And so this is basically whenever Zach shows up, okay? Let me see where, let me see if I can find it, okay? Ah, here it is, okay? Uh, okay, well, this isn't whenever he first shows up. Let me try and flick over to you. Yeah, see, I haven't even read this in so long. That I haven't even shown this. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, okay, this is his very first dialogue here, okay? So, you can suddenly hear the voice of Zach. He's running towards them. Okay, and then th this is basically the whole dialogue part here, okay? Hey, Queefs, guess he's back, back again. Zachary's back, no pretend thing. So, obviously, Zach is like the, the, he's like the comic relief of the series. Like, the series is kind of a comedy in itself. Because oh, that's how the two, that's how we met. It was kind of like through. Do you days. want me to read any lines? I'm looking uh, at it right if now. If you want, do you want to do you want to do Zach? Because your Zach impression is pretty good, to be fair. <sighs> all right. So uh, I, I don't know if people want to hear that. I but, don't care. Uh, you might as well right. go for it. Okay. All and right. Just, fine. Fine. Just to clarify. Hold on. Right. Okay. Good. Good. Sorry. Sorry. I just had to make sure we're actually looking at this. Sorry. Sorry. Whenever you see that, everyone's fine. I just have to make sure. Okay. Um. So. Basically, obviously, like I said, Zach is like like he's the one that no one really takes seriously because he's flipping an idiot. He thinks he's like the big guy in town. He thinks he's like he's like the, the king of everything. Okay, so anyway, so that that's his first line. That's his very first line whenever he comes back. But it's not the first line ever because you meet him in the previous episode. But this is just like reiterating who he is, pretty much, and showing that his character hasn't changed at all. Okay, so uh oh, everybody bow down to the pussy pimp himself. That's an inside joke as into what happened in the previous episode. That's what he called himself. He's a self-proclaimed pussy pimp. Okay, so then Zach has this line, which I hope Chris can see. I could see it. It's, it's kind of blurry, but I'll do my best. Damn right, motherfucker. So what are so what are we doing on? I'm and then the map. you know, I don't yeah, know he hasn't made the, the map, map is yet because I don't really play Reach that much. But go on. No, no one plays on this map anymore. And then I basically my character in it, my, myself, is basically more of like he's like, he's like the informer. Like he kind of just reiterate. He's almost like the guy we're trying to like maintain the peace. You know, he's trying to like uh, he's he's kind of like. Like Matt's most of the substance too, because he he's a main character. But as for me, I'm kind of like more of the the relaxed. Like, okay, here's what's going. Here's what we're doing. Just for anyone that doesn't know, here's what's going on. Okay, so I don't think it's that bad. Besides, we're doing a special challenge. So basically, he's just reiterating to anyone that doesn't know what we're doing here. But it's also reiterating to Zach. Okay, go on. Uh, let's see. Oh, a special challenge. Well, it's probably no match for me then. Basically, Zach is being boastful again, as always. Uh. You have to get a kill of every weapon on every map. Ha! That is pissed easy. I do that in my sleep. Uh, busy, once again, reiterating it. Alrighty then, how about you join us in the next map and see who can beat the challenge in that match the quickest? Just You're on, but get ready to die. Dial. Uh, I can't read that. Busy says, we're going to die at OE100, I'm going to kick your ass.com. Obviously, once again, reiterating the absolutely means nothing about everything. Seems legit. Blah blah blah. All right. Well, that's 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 kind of a weird part of it, but I might as well just go down to this part. This is never Zach trying to convince. I won't go on for much. Time. I just want to try and get to the part where you pretty much just see like, Zach trying to convince Matt and Pete to like see this glitch that he has. Okay. But anyway, um, hey, we like we hey we like to stay up all night and talk to you in your damn American time zones. Or we have to stay up all night talk to you in your damn American time zones. Uh, QQ. 
busy like a crying face, obviously. Let's go, Matt. Sorry, Zach. Okay, hey, before you go, can I show you guys something? Depends on what it is. It's an awesome glitch. No, definitely not. You know, it's obviously like they, they don't trust them enough. Like, basically, my characters is like, what, what they're saying is, is trying to reflect like, what the audience is supposed to respond to. And because since Matt and Pete have like the most, like, uh, they have the most like narration towards and they have the most like, screen time, then that pretty much makes them all, especially for Matt, because Matt's the first character they introduced to you in the whole series. So you're supposed to be supposed to like sympathize with that character and basically feel how he feels is what I'm trying to push here. Anyway. Oh, come on, guys. Why not? Remember the last time you showed us a glitch? And that's his little flashback, blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay. All right. Here we are. Okay. Next part. See this? Yeah, I can see it. Ah, poof. That was ages ago. It was three days ago. Whatever. I want to go check it out. And then Matt Zach just completely ignoring what, what Matt just said once again, showing like, so this is basically reiterating like how how you can like change his character like how you can like how you can really convey his personality in, in a certain thing. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so basically, there's obviously showing the Matt that Zach's like ignorant and stuff. He doesn't really listen to anyone because like you just had that little flashback part and Zach just completely like he doesn't care about it. Okay. No. Besides, we still need to work on getting this challenge done. No, guys, wait up. It's super important. It really is a glitch, I promise. What is so what what is so important that we must halt the progress of this challenge to see? Why don't you come and find out? Hmm. All right, but if you promise this is indeed a glitch and not some stupid trick, then we will see it, but it should literally take only five minutes to witness. Yeah, dude, not even five minutes. More like five seconds. Kind of doubt that. However, I need to see if you're serious about this. Do you... Do you see this face? This is my serious face. Right, I guess we'll stop here because it's, because it's, it's good. like literally I'll be running through the entire script. I didn't see it's 24 pages yeah. long, so I don't want to run through it all. But basically, yeah. the, the, those are like prime examples as to how I might as well go back to this face on. Basically, it's a prime example of showing you know, per, like um, showing off like like traits and stuff in your personality, showing off relationships where you can tell they're kind of friends in a way because no one's getting really angry. No one's like, oh, you know, why wouldn't you see this glitch? I don't care. You know, you can tell the friends because. Peach is kind of like like beating off him, like kind of going, ah, oh, you know, like they 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 both kind of like they're joking at each other in a way, uh, not so much in the in the opening episodes because like they're just starting to get to know each other, but it's just kind of like that mutual stance where it's like we're not gonna be angry, you're not gonna be angry, so that's just what we think about it. I might as well stop sharing yep. screens here while while I'm doing this. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Yeah. So. So yeah, pretty interesting concept. Obviously, that was a fir that was the first time we've actually really talked in depth about your. Machinima yeah. series for Halo yeah. because it's in it's been in the intro to the writer's block for so long and I we've never really talked about okay, it. Well, we've talked about my well book. Something here, okay? So basically yeah. this might actually be a recurring thing. If this if this keeps up, we might actually go to each other's work and like try and compare prime examples oh. to what we were just talking about in our own setting, okay? Yes. So yeah, why why good. not? I mean we have we have the settings, yeah. you know, we might as well do it. So Exactly. Basically, that was mine. Pr pretty per. I'm, I'm sorry about that. It was kind of like impromptu, you know. Nah, that was but fine. It just but, was um, in the very beginning. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately, we do have to be wrapping it up a little bit. Um, anyway, um, well, because... I guess we might as well do the usual pluggy type things. Okay. So next week is all about scenery and all about how to describe scenery for scenery for books and cinematography for for like uh, for movies. And yep. so, and then we're going to be looking at the orb and seeing what the orb does. The scenery, showing prime examples of that. So now it's like the pressure's on. To be honest, to find out. Oh um, boy! I, I all might, right, all right. I might go back to the series and like polish it a bit because I haven't looked at it in several months. That was the first time I looked at it in quite a little months. So I might look. I might go back to it and you know polish it a bit because I was kind of a bit. Yeah. But well, okay, yeah. we'll see what happens. Okay. Anyway, now that we have this, we can actually do plugs here. So I guess first of all, we might as well go to if you if like if you're seeing this now, you're obviously on. Oop. The Air Raid Lord. The Air Raid Lord on YouTube. Here we go. I always didn't subscribe to him, so I can't see his channel trailer and whatnot. But here you go. The right my channel, one is down here. There it is. My channel trailer is always my most recent video because it's just like a featured video, so I don't really change it. <laughs> there you go. So there's the writer's blog playlist you can see, so you can check all the previous... If you're a new viewer, and check out the previous episodes there. Unfortunately, no webcam quality, but nevertheless. So I need to blow my nose again. Sorry about this. Oh, dear. <laughs> Alright, I was going yeah. so close as well. Anyway, Frost right. to the snowman blew his, uh, his ice popsicles up our assholes, and we all have, like, sniffleless. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. there's the there's the Red Lord channel. Obviously, you know, we do these plugs. If you want to check me out, go to my channel. Oh, look at that, beautiful. You can just see me right there. Uh, there's my YouTube channel. Yeah. I only uploaded yesterday. Jack and Dex is going to be uploading later tonight. So by the time you're watching, this will probably already Woo! up. 
So yes, very excited Second for that, yeah. 2 will be up. Uh, but there you go. There's my channel all there, blah, blah, blah. I actually have a uh, writer's block playlist down here. There it is, yep. UBKA. So Pete uh, has his own writer's block playlist, which is identical to mine, so there's no difference. But yeah. since we both host it, it made sense to have it on both channels. I know. And then obviously, actually, you could you could follow us on Twitter as well, because we've actually gotten a lot more active on Twitter, especially me. I've been on Twitter a lot more, so... Yep. You know, so so you can follow me on Twitter if you want. There it is there, Pete and I. There's no point in me clicking on it, because I mean, it's, it's right there. Uh... You can go to the orb, the airraidlord.com, as well as the orb.com. The yeah, the orb.com. Yeah, yeah, the airraidlord.com. There's the book. There's the orb that we've been talking about. I three on my bed, etc. Uh, so there you go. And then here it is for the first time ever. The writer's block section on the on the website. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There it is. Yeah, so yeah, I finally did it. I know, I finally did it. I have to, up there. I have to update the other episodes, but it has its own section now. So By the way, we have now. episode three on twice. Just FYI, I just realized that there now. Episode three is on there twice. We have episode oh, one, I'll episode change two, it. episode three, episode three, episode four. But by the time you're seeing this, this will be updated pretty much. So that's okay. pretty much it. Stun, I think that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this X split stuff. I might as well go back to the normal cam. There it is. Woo! So. Yay. That's us done for this. Once again, like Chris said, let us know how you how you like this. If you hear it, if you if you really hear the writer's block, be sure to let us know, and we will ridicule Noah. We'll, we'll if it's constructive, we'll take it on board. If it's and by the way, that pump up clip, that is a great example of how silence can be used in a video game. Ooh, yes. there you go. Yes. Interesting enough. So <laughs> before I die, I guess you might as well stop recording. <laughs> There's a flipping blow in my nose and coughing. Yeah, before we Jimmy. die, or we have to read quotations in Russian. We will sign off. Yes, and, so, uh, so basically the one thing we want to get you out of this is don't quote in Russian, okay? Yes, that is the me. purpose. I, I would have named that the name of the episode, don't yeah. quote in Russian, but I think <laughs> it would be misconstruing, so I think oh, well. we'll stick anyway, with the dynamic. I guess, you, I guess you enjoyed episode 8. See you for episode 9. What are we going to do for our 10 episode special? Oh, uh, I have some ideas. Well, P and oh, I will discuss ideas, it, and uh, we will uh, give those details to you later on. So uh, no spoilers now, but until then, we'll see you guys later. Yes, peace.